So you bought a specialized bike with a Future Shock. What the heck is the Future Shock? Is it the 1983 album of jazz pianist Herbie Hancock? Well, yes, but that's not what we're here for, is it? The Future Shock is an innovative suspension design that puts 20 millimeters of travel above the head tube rather than the typical fork suspension design. In theory, according to Specialized, having 20 millimeters of travel above the head tube provides relief from the road chatter without compromising handling or efficiency. That's fancy talk that means the Future Shock allows you to ride longer without the suspension slowing you down. This will be a deep dive video. We'll cover everything you wanted to know about the Future Shock. If you've clicked on this video for a specific reason, check out the description. I separated each topic with a timestamp. Feel free to jump to any part of the video. This will be a longer video, so let's get started. If you're new here, my name is Joe, and I love bikes, adventures, and enjoying how freaking amazing life is. If you love any of that, hit subscribe. And if by the end of this video you found it helpful or entertaining, hit that like button. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video. In every video, I share the best comments from previous videos. If you left a comment, I may share yours. Since you're watching this video, I imagine you're riding or considering riding a Specialized Diverge, Roubaix, Ruby, Cirrus, or one of the two new e-bikes to the Future Shock lineup, the Turbo Creo SL and the Turbo Valdo SL. The Future Shock design is pretty clever. It's a suspension cartridge housed in the fork steerer. Later in this video, we'll unpack the whole assembly of the Future Shock 1.5 to show how to swap out the booster springs, adjust the stem height, and swap out the future stem to a standard stem. But first, let's delve into the differences between the 1.5 and 2.0. Lower end models have the 1.5 and higher end models come with the on the fly adjustability and hydraulic damping of the 2.0. If you want to quickly change the damping rate on the 2.0, simply turn the dial. To change the rate of compression in the 1.5, you have a choice of three springs and what you'll need to swap out before you ride. Depending on your model, these springs will either be linear or progressive. More on these springs later when we go over changing the springs in the 1.5. While the adjustability of the 2.0 during your ride, opposed to swapping springs before your ride on the 1.5, is the most noticeable difference. The most ingenious distinction is the technology of the 2.0. The oil-based hydraulic damping system reduces spring rebound on rough terrain. This means that the 2.0 will bounce a lot less than the 1.5. I said earlier that the lower end models come with the 1.5. This is not to say that the 2.0 is better than the 1.5. Deciding between a bike with the 1.5 versus the 2.0 depends on your needs as a rider and your riding style. This can be an important decision because there are significant price jumps on bikes with the 2.0. Removing cost is a factor. The on-the-fly adjustability of the 2.0 is nice, but this truthfully comes down to convenience. In my opinion, your decision between a bike with the 1.5 or the 2.0 should come down to the benefits of hydraulic damping. If your rides are predominantly on rough terrain with lots of road chatter, the damping of the 2.0 will work better for you. But on a typical road ride, the 1.5 is more than adequate. I've said before on this channel, there are a lot of trade-offs in life and cycling. Deciding between the 1.5 and 2.0 Future Shock is no different. Let's begin disassembling the Future Shock 1.5. Except for swapping out the springs of the 1.5, the procedures you'll see here are nearly identical on the 2.0. Kate needs a bit more stack height while she rides her Diverge, so we'll be swapping the stem and adding some spacers. If you want to lower your stem height, we'll cover that here as well. If you ever worked with a typical threadless headset that is compressed with a star nut, you'll see that the Future Shock system works much the same way, with a few key differences because of the suspension cartridge. To start, you want to remove the top cap. It's only hand tightened and easy to remove, but it's easy to remove if you loosen the two bolts on the future stem with a 4mm hex. Now you can remove the top cap by threading it out. Continue to loosen the stem bolts and then remove the stem and handlebars and set it safely on the front wheel. Now you can see the top of the exposed future shock cartridge. Let's tackle swapping out the booster spring first. You can remove the cartridge cap with a 20mm cone wrench. If you're like me and your largest cone wrench is only 16 millimeters, you can use an adjustable wrench. Just make sure the wrench has toothless jaws so you don't damage the cap. 
Now with the cap off, you can remove the booster spring. Each Future Shock 1.5 comes with three springs that adjust the rate of compression. You can visually see which spring is the softest and firmest rate by looking at the thickness of the coils. But Specialized has made it easy for us by color coding each spring. The softest spring with 13 pounds of compression is blue. The medium black spring has 25 pounds of compression and the firm yellow spring has 40 pounds of compression. Which one you go with really depends on personal preference and what type of riding environments you'll be in. If you want a stiff ride, insert the yellow spring. If you want a soft ride, insert the blue spring. If you need a balance between the two, insert the black spring. Now reinstall the cartridge cap. Torque it to 6.2 newton meters. To make this work, you'll need a crow's foot like the one I have here. If you don't have one, just tighten the cap until you feel it gets snug. Though I highly recommend getting a crow's foot in a torque wrench. Check the description below. I have links to most of the tools I use in all my videos. If all you want to do is replace the booster spring, you can put the assembled handlebars and stem back on. Then hand tighten the top cap back and firmly tighten the stem bolts to 5 newton meters. The Diverge, like Kate's here, comes with progressive springs, while the road-based Future Shock bikes, like the Roubaix, comes with linear springs. What's the difference between the two? Linear springs have the same rate of compression, while the rate of compression increases on a progressive spring. An easy way to see the difference between a linear and progressive spring is the space between the coils. The coils on a linear spring, like the ones here, are the same distance throughout the length of the spring. The coils on a progressive spring will change throughout the length of the spring. If you've been observant, you may have noticed that the springs I swapped here are linear and not progressive like the Diverge should have. I'm not sure how Kate got linear springs with her Diverge. My guess is the bike shop received a delivery of a Roubaix and a Diverge on the same day, assembled them close together, and accidentally swapped the bags with the springs in them. Let's swap out the stem. The feature stem clamps to the future shock cartridge like a typical stem would to a fork steerer tube. The top of the cartridge is narrower than a typical steerer tube so the future stem comes with a shim to fit it over the top of the cartridge. If you want to fit a standard 1 and 1 8 inch threadless stem, you need to use this thicker spacer. That's what we'll be doing here. We'll be swapping out the future stem with a specialized comp multi-stem. This is a pretty cool stem that allows you to adjust the stem angle. This is the 17 degree model. It can be adjusted from negative 13 degrees to 21 degrees by using three different types of shims. Don't let the complexity of the stem muddle the ease of the Future Shock stem swap. I just think it's a cool design that will help Kate dial in her stem height without buying a ton of different stems. To replace the Future Stem, simply loosen the stem bolts and top cap as before. Since we're replacing the stem, we'll also remove the handlebars from the stem with a 4mm hex wrench. Now let's fully loosen the stem bolts and remove the Future Stem. To install the standard threadless stem, insert the thicker cartridge shim into the stem and insert the stem on the cartridge top. So that everything lines up, align the shim with the stem slot and the front wheel. Now you can thread the top cap and tighten the stem bolts. Torque the bolts to the specified spec on your stem. This multi-com stem should be torqued to 5 newton meters. Reinstall your handlebars, torque them to spec, and you're done. What if you want to raise or lower your stem height? In a typical threadless headset design, this is done with spacers, like the ones you see on my Soma Wolverine. There are a few ways to adjust the stem height with a Future Shock. Both involve removing the cartridge. To remove the Future Shock cartridge, make sure your front wheel is placed on the ground so the fork assembly doesn't slip out. Slide out the headset cover by pinching both sides and pulling it to the front of the bike. Then with a 4mm hex wrench, loosen the collar bolt on the drive side. Once it's loose enough, you can pull out the whole Future Shock cartridge. The cartridge is not serviceable. If it ever gets damaged, you can replace the entire cartridge for around 55 US dollars. Now I have a choice between the tall headset cap and the short headset cap. If you want to use the lower cap, slide the tall headset cap off and replace it with the low cap. Slide the cartridge back into the fork steer and tighten the 4mm collar bolt through the short cap hole. Before assembling the stem and handlebars in place, you need to make sure the preload is adjusted correctly. We'll cover this after the next step on raising your stem height. To raise your stem height, your kit comes with three 5mm spacers that you can install between the Future Shock boot and the headset cap. Specialized advise is not going above 15 millimeters. Here, we'll install all three spacers. If your kit didn't come with spacers, contact your local bike shop. The Future Shock cartridge has a wider diameter than a standard fork steerer, so typical 1 and 1 8 inch spacers won't work here as they will be too small. After installing the spacers, insert the cartridge into the fork steerer by lining up the arrow on the cartridge with the front of the bike. Then torque the collar bolt to 4 newton meters. Now slide the stem into the top of the cartridge and thread on the top cap and torque all stem bolts to spec. Before we insert the headset cover, let's check to ensure that the preload is set right. Take your bike off the stand. While holding the front brake, 
Try and rock the bike forward and backward. Most bikes have some movement, but if you feel any excessive movement, or worse, see the fork move where it meets the frame, you'll need to adjust the preload. Start by loosening the locking screws on either side of the collar with a 2.5 millimeter hex. Now tighten the two preload screws with a two millimeter hex wrench until they contact the compression ring. Don't adjust one preload screw and then the other. You wanna evenly and gradually adjust them. While holding the front of the bike, rock it back and forth again. If you still feel any play, tighten the preload screws until any looseness is eliminated. Now we'll want to tighten the locking screws without changing the preload adjustment we just set. To do this, insert the three millimeter open wrench that came with your kit on the preload screws just below the collar. This will hold the preload screws in place while you retighten the locking screws with the two millimeter hex. These should be torqued to one newton meter, but my torque wrench lowest setting is two newton meters. Just make sure they are snug enough so the preload screw doesn't loosen up and don't go crazy while tightening. I hope all the information in this video was helpful. If so, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this.